If Sir Isaac Newton suddenly popped out of a time machine, he would be delighted to see how far physics had come. Things that are deeply mysterious a few centuries ago are now taught in freshman physics classes like the composition of stars. Newton would be stunned to see enormous experiments like the Large Hadron Collider LSC in Switzerland and possibly would be shocked when he will go to learn that his theory of gravity had been superseded by one tripped a fellow named Albert Einstein. But once he was up to speed, Newton would no doubt applaud what modern physics has achieved. From the discovery of the nature of light in the 19th century, determining the structure of the atom in the 20th century, to the last year's discovery of time. Gravitational waves. Physicists have solved some of the biggest mysteries of the universe, but they are not done yet. There are many unsolved problems in physics, and in this video, we are gonna share five of them. So, hello guys, this is Freaky Astrophile. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done yet. Let's start with the number one. What is matter made up of? We know matter is made up of atoms, and atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And we know that protons and neutrons are made up of smaller particles known as quarks. We know something called the standard model of particle physics, which is very good at explaining the interactions between subatomic particles. The standard model has also been used to predict the existence of previously unknown particles. The particle to be found in this way was the Higgs boson, which LHC researchers discovered in 2012. The standard model does not explain everything. It doesn't explain why the Higgs boson exists. It doesn't explain in detail why the Higgs boson has the mass that it has. Second, why is gravity so weird? No force is more familiar than gravity. And Einstein's theory of general relativity gives a mathematical formulation for gravity, describing it as a weapon space. But gravity is a trillion 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 times weaker than the, than the other three known forces. It could be that gravity is as strong as these forces, but that it gets rapidly diluted by spilling out into other invisible dimensions. If these extra dimensions exist, and if gravity is able to leak into them, it could explain why gravity seems so weak to us. Some physicists hoped that experiment at the LHC would give a hint of these extra dimensions, but so far, no luck. Third, why does time seem to flow only in one direction? Since Einstein, physicists have thought of space and time as a four-dimensional structure known as space-time. But space differs from time in very fundamental ways. In space, we are free to move about as we wish. When it comes to time, we are stuck. We grow older, not younger, and we remember the past but not the future. Time, unlike space, seems to have preferred direction, physicists call it the arrow of time. Some physicists suspect that the second law of thermodynamics provides a clue. It states that the entropy of a physical system rises over time, and physicists think that this increase is what gives time its direction. Entropy may be rising now because it was lower earlier, and why was it low to begin with? Was the entropy of the universe unusually low 14 billion years ago when the Big Bang brought the universe into existence? Physicists call it the missing piece of the puzzle. But the deepest part of the question is, why is time so different from space? Recent computer simulation seems to show how the asymmetry of time might arise from the fundamental laws of physics. But the work is controversial and the ultimate nature of time continues to steer passionate debate. Number 4. Where did all the antimatter go? Antimatter may be more famous in fiction than in real life. We know that for each particle of ordinary matter, it's possible to have an identical particle with an opposite electrical charge. An antiproton is just like a proton but with a negative charge. An antiparticle corresponding to the negatively charged electron, meanwhile, is a positively charged positron. Physicists have created antimatter in the laboratory, but when they do, they create an equal amount of matter, which suggests that the Big Bang must have created matter and antimatter in equal quantities. Yet, almost everything we see around us, from ground beneath our feet to the most remote galaxies, is made up of ordinary matter. What's going on? Why is there more matter than antimatter? Our best guess is that the Big Bang somehow produced a tiny bit more matter than antimatter. 
what had to have happened early in the history of the universe in the very moments after the Big Bang started. For every 10 billion antimatter particles, there are 14 billion and 1 matter particles. And the matter and the antimatter annihilated the 10 billion leaving the one. And that little one is the mass that makes of us. Number 5. Can we find a unified theory of physics? We now have two overacting theories to explain just about every physical phenomenon. Einstein's theory of general relativity and quantum mechanics. The former is good at explaining the motion of everything from golf balls to galaxies. Quantum mechanics is equally impressive in its own domain, the realm of atoms and some atomic particles. Trouble is that the two theories describe our world in very different terms. In quantum mechanics, events unfold against a fixed backdrop of space-time, while in general relativity, space-time is itself flexible. For decades now, string theory, which pictures matter as made up of tiny vibrating strings or loops of energy, has been touted as the best bit for producing a unified theory of physics. But some physicists prefer loop quantum gravity, in which space itself is imagined to be made of tiny loops. For now, theory of everything continues to elude us. Share this video with everyone. Thanks for watching.